In this episode of the Android Media Store Thumbnail Viewer, we're going to be setting up a full screen image viewer. So for when you click on an image thumbnail, the full screen version of that thumbnail will be displayed on your screen. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials, my name's Nigel. Okay, so in the previous tutorial we set up our on-click listener, basically providing us with the location of the image when we click on an image thumbnail. Now we're going to display that thumbnail as a full screen in its own activity. Okay, so we'll make a start here. First thing we want to do is we're going to have to create a new activity to display that full, uh, that full screen image. Okay, so I'm going to create that activity in this folder here. So right click new, go to activity down here, and I tend to favor the empty activities. Give it a name. Let's just call it full screen image activity. Everything else should remain the same. Click finish. And this is asked, you may or may not, depending whether you've got Git set up on your studio, but this is asking me if I want to add the files to Git. I do, because I want to provide them to you at a later stage from Git. Okay, so we've got the full screen activity here. First thing I want to do is go into resources. I want to have a look at the layout. So activity full screen image here. Let's click on that. Okay, I just want to remove the padding. I want it to display on the full screen. So remove the padding. Now go down here and select the design tab. Uh, if you've got a problem here, I'll highlight this. Change 24 down to 23. And wait for it. Okay, let's, let me just close down this window here so we can see this easier. Okay, so there's the thumb. We've got the relative layout here. There's no views in here. We want an image view. So just grab the image view, probably in the center there. And now go back to the text tab down here. And I'm going to sort of set the layout width and height as, to imagine, um, as matching the parent, uh, the parent views width and height. So change that to match parent and do the same thing for your height as such and I just want to just change the ID name to something more specific so full screen image view will do for me and that's about the only changes I want to make to the layout file itself now let's go into the activity Full screen image activity here. Here we are here. So basically we want the application's main activity, which has got the on-click functionality in it, to basically provide the location of where the thumbnail is, and then we want to display that into the full screen version here, into this activity. So I've got the activity here. And it does have an image view. So let's first of all set up a member to access the image view from the layout. So create an image view. Uh, let's call it full screen image view. And I will need to cast that to an image view. And find view by ID. And there it is, our full screen image view. I've got to remember representing that from the layout file. Okay, now, now we can do a check on intents that might have called this activity. So we're going to create an intent in the um, main application activity that gets sent and starts this activity. So we can check that 
intent because the intent is also going to hold the URI representing the location of the image. Okay, so first of all, let's create an intent. Let's call it, I call it calling activity intent. And we'll provide it with a method called get intent as such. Okay, now inside that, I just want to check to see or not whether a tent actually consists of something or if it's not null. So to check to see whether it's not null before moving forward or, or actually we'll get a null exception. Okay, so from in here we can actually get the data or the URI. So let's create a member for the URI. And we'll just call it image URI because that's what it should be representing. And call the intent and get data. Okay. And Basically, once we've got the URI representing the location of where our image is, we've got up here the image view we want to populate with that uh, image. We can then, we've got everything we need, uh, especially, and we're going to be using Glide in this case because we used it previously. So we might as well reuse Glide so we can open up a smaller size of that ver image in um, uh, our background thread. So first of all, let's do some checks to make sure we have our image URI, so do check to see if it's not equal to null, and also check to see that we've got a, um, an image view as well, check that against not equal to null. Now if all those things are good, we can now call glide. First of all we need the activity, the activity could just call this, which represents this entire activity. Okay, first thing we want to do is load and we've now got the URI, so call image URI. Now next step here is I want to override. No, I don't want to override because we're loading the full screen image. Okay, so now we can just go into the um, actual image view which is full screen image view. And that should be fine. So that's now the code for the activity now implemented and completed. Now we need to go into our calling activity and just set up an intent to start up this activity and provide it with the data URI. Okay, so going to the calling activity from our main activity. Here we have down here, which is on image click. So inside this method here, we're going to start the other full screen image activity. So we can comment out this first. We need to create an intent. So um, this intent is where we're going to put the location of the data. It's all going to be used to start the activity. So we'll call this intent full screen intent equals new intent and this is the context and we're going to provide it with the name of the class we want to call so what's it full screen activity image and make sure you put class on class on the end there okay so the intent's now been created now we need to put the location the uri information of where the image resides into this intent so call the intent and it's just a matter of calling set data with the image URI. Intent's now set up, ready to be sent. And so we can send it by just calling start activity with the intent. So we'll start activity. Intent's, the intent does two things here. It provides us the location of the calling activity we want to call as well as we've put in the data of the location of the image in there. And that should be it. So let's try running this and see what happens. Okay, application's now started. Let's record it so you can see what's going on. Okay, so 
we're going to use the on click functionality from the previous tour. I'm going to click on the headphones. And there you see we have a full screen image of the headphones there. These dimensions are just matching the parent dimensions as such. And so you've got the full screen image there. So that, that works. Because it's starting in a new activity, we can just press the back button and go back to the viewer again. And that concludes this tutorial. So what we learned here is where we learned how to create a new activity along with its layout file. We learned how to add a image view to the layout file. We also learned how to listen for activities that call our activity in the form of get intent, so we can get the intent back, and how to get the information of where the thumbnail was stored inside the storage, how to get the address from that. And we went back to our old friend, the Glide Library, to actually display that image in the full, full screen as such. Anyway, so that concludes this, this part in this episode of the tutorial. If you want to get notified of further episodes to this tutorial series or any of the other tutorials that I'm working on, don't forget to click on the subscribe button down below if you haven't already. And to my left, we've got a number of my social media accounts. So if you want to get up to date on any of the news and events and mobile application tutorials, those are the accounts to follow. Um, whether or not I'm uploading code to GitHub, writing an article, or uploading a new video amongst my many tasks, those are the places to follow me with. Directly above me is a link to my website. And not only does that include the video itself, it also includes details of how to get the source code from GitHub and also explanations about the code changes we make as well. And if you've got any questions that um, aren't in the form of a suspected bug to this tutorial, you're going to have to contact me on CodeMentor and there's a link to CodeMentor just there. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial. Thank you for watching and bye for now.